the nation's favourite celebrities. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Paired up with an expert. Oh, we've had some fun, haven't we? And a classic car. It feels as if it could go quite fast. Their mission? To scar Britain for antiques. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> I do that in slow mo. The aim? To make the biggest profit at auction. Come on, boys. But it's no easy ride. Ta-da! Who will find a hidden gem? <laughs> Don't sell me! Who will take the biggest risks? Go away, darling. Will anybody follow expert advice? <laughs> I'm trying to spend money here. There will be worthy winners. <laughs> yes! And valiant losers. <laughs> Put your pedal to the metal. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Today we're in the south of England with a couple of showbiz best pals. It's comedy legend Jennifer Saunders and fellow top actress Patricia Potter, who are joined by a very special passenger, Olive, Jennifer's dog, who you can see in the back. <laughs> Hello, Olive. You're very close to me there. <laughs> I think she's loving it. Do you remember once I said to you, listen, if I never get to go on actual Antiques Road Trip, shouldn't we do our own Antiques Road and Trip? And here we are on and actual here we are. Antiques Road Trip. Jennifer is one of the UK's best-loved comedians, thanks to her hit shows like French and Saunders and Absolutely Fabulous. You're quite hot on antiques, aren't you? A bit of a magpie. I'm, well, it's just a sort of hobby. I can't resist a junk shop or an I know. antique shop. I have spent. I don't a like few posh years. antique shops, I must say. <laughs> oh no, too stressful. Patricia, or Tish to her friends, is regularly on our TV screens and is probably best known for her time as Diane Lloyd in Holby City. I once saw on, on uh, an antiques programme that if you touch the tip of your tongue on a diamond, if it stays cold, it's real. And I think you sometimes have to lick the edge of a ceramic bowl to tell if it's been restored. I think there's going to be quite a and lot of licking in this antiques <laughs> road trip. <laughs> I shall be licking leave it to all the antiques. Excuse me. Maybe come in and lick some of your wares. I'm going to go in and lick all the antiques <laughs> before you can lick them. <laughs> Rather you than me, Jennifer. This morning, our leading ladies are motoring along in a very nice 1957 Porsche 365. In blue. 20 miles an hour. Is that all come we're doing? On, come on, oh, come on. Put your foot down, woman. Come on. <laughs> On this journey, Jennifer and Tish will be joined by a couple of road trip veterans, none other than Mark Stacey and Philip Serrell. The boys are back in town. Who are roaming around in this beautiful 1973 Triumph GT6 in red. What's really interesting is that Jennifer is really into her antiques. Is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As I gather that she does the uh, ant or various antique fairs. And of course, she's like you then, Philip, because you're nearly an antique, aren't you? Not quite. Not quite. We haven't found the hallmark yet. No, I'm well patinated. Once paired up, our teams will kick off this road trip with £400 in their pockets. Starting near Taplow in Buckinghamshire, our teams will then be buying in Berkshire, Hampshire and Oxfordshire before heading to Greenwich in London for auction. Here they are. Oh, look. Porsche 356. Hey. <laughs> There's the boys. Oh, it's done the oh, yeah. <laughs> <It's> so frightening. <laughs> How are you, lovely? Hello, this is very exciting. Good to see you, Mark. I'm glad it's got break. Oh, how are you? Mm. And who's this? This is Olive. Oh, look, Olive, how are you? Hi, nice, Mark. Hi. Lovely to meet you, too. Mark, I'm working with Olive. How are you? I'm working oh, with Olive. Oh, oh good, Olive. Hello, Olive. <laughs> oh, aren't you good? Hi, my love, how are you? Hello. Good really to see lovely. you, yeah, good to so, see you. So, you've got Tish. I have. Yeah. And you've got a blue car, we've got a red car. Well, this, this looks is lovely, beautiful. doesn't it? This is Who's driving? So beautiful. I'm happy to drive. Right, I've got gonna a bit be of experience now. Steal a march. Ped off, it's time to hit the road. Come on, Olive. Oh, well done. Woo -hoo! Do you know what I'm most pleased about? What? Our passenger. Oh, Olive. Olive in the back there. Olive, Olive how are you, babe? I think we've got a slightly better car. 
I think we've got a better car and a better export. Oh, well. I wouldn't let Phil hear you say that. For their first stop, Jennifer and Phil are heading to Hare Hatch near Reading. When did you discover that you can make people laugh? Well, I think it was probably at home. I used to laugh all the time at home when my dad was funny. And it was a general rule that, you know, if you're going to sit down and have a meal together, you crack jokes and yeah. you, you did imitations of your teachers and you, you made fun of things and situations and people. So I think I had quite a good upbringing for that. And then at school, I never did much. And it wasn't until I met Dawn at college and we sort of uh, started messing about in college cabarets and things that I got the complete bug. And it is a bug, you get the bug. Because the second you hear someone laugh, it's like the world yeah. changes, you go, thank you, I know what I want to do now. If you're writing something for someone, yeah. and they don't deliver what you've imagined, how, yes. how does that work? You throw I have, them? no, I have been known to do it for them. Really? To go, no, that's not, listen to what I'm saying. And this is how you say it. When we were doing our fab, Jane Horrocks always used to say, she said, why don't you just do it for me? How do you want it done? <laughs> oh, OK. And so then she'd do it. And I thought, I'd, you know, that's... that's well, it's, it's, it's professional. It makes it easier. Yeah, it makes it much easier. That should help with keeping Phil in check, then. Jennifer, Phil and Olive <laughs> have arrived at their first shop of the trip. Come on, Do you think we've got an unfair advantage with Olive? What? It, that's... Well, it's three against two. That's true. Come on, Al. Give me a go. With plenty of antiques and collectibles on offer, all three of them get stuck in. That looks like every Elizabethan comedy set I've ever been on. Take the pick. Yeah, that's very good. There you go. Oh, it's something I can lick. Yeah. No, yeah, fake. Yuck. This is an occasional table. Sorry, occasional table, it says that one. It always makes me laugh when I say occasional tables. I'm not sure what they're doing. What else? It's a part time yeah. table. Yeah. After a good old rummage round, it looks like Jennifer has uncovered something interesting. Oh, no. There's something that was once alive. Something that was once alive. Oh, has my Olive it killed might that? still be alive. What the. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? I know where that's going. It's not going on my head. No, I know. Go on, then. Philip, go on. Do I look... <gasps> look at it. Do I look like Rumpole? You do. Really? Hmm. But look, we've got his um, little stock, whatever it's called, his little collar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With all the... and his collars. Yeah. Seen better days, the collars. Yeah. Those, haven't they? Seen better days. But this is a nice tin. I like that. Do you like that? I think that's really nice. It sports a price of £68. Is there a deal to be done with Nigel? How old do you think it is? Uh, well, the tin is certainly Victorian, as I thought. I don't yeah. think it's any earlier than that. Um, late 19th? Yeah, I think you're probably right, yeah. I think we're going to need to give you £40 for it, really, because it's going to make £50 to £80 at auction. That's my view. And I, I'm not like... going to get there at 40, I'm afraid. Uh, you will get there at 55. See, we're nowhere near you at that, I don't think, because mm. we're just going to lose money there. Well, the best, and this is the death, is 50. Decision time, chaps. Are you willing to part with £50 for the Victorian wig and tin? I think we should, because I think we might find something can go with it. We might. But yeah. it's not, it's, listen, we're going to have fun with that wig. OK, there we go. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, and I'm onwards, sir. Thank yeah. you, Nigel. Oh, first bye's at the belt, yeah. See you, bye. Yeah. bye. Bye. So that's Jennifer and Phil bagging their first lot. Great stuff. <laughs> Patricia and Mark, meanwhile, are making their way to Reading. Did you enjoy working on Holy City? Oh, I loved it. What a great job. And you, you know a lot about medicine. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I, I know nothing about medicine. I married a doctor. Oh, you married a doctor? I married a doctor. I married lovely Jim, who was doing... We met, I met doing Holy. That's another great thing about the job. Um, I 
Yeah, you met your husband on COVID. What was yes, he doing? Was he was doing a... medical advising. Oh, really? Only to meet girls, you know. <laughs> it worked, then. Tish and Mark are starting this trip with a visit to the Royal Berkshire Medical Museum. During World War I, the Royal Berkshire and Battle Hospitals treated thousands of injured soldiers. And it was here that one surgeon pioneered a new way of healing wounds when he discovered previously unidentified bacteria by using his nose. Hello. Good morning. Tish and Mark are meeting retired consultant general surgeon and museum volunteer Tom Den to find out more. So, Tom, can you tell us a bit about what life would have been like for the soldiers on the front line? Pretty miserable on the front line. Over 1.5 million men and women uh, were injured. And many of those injuries occurred in really desperate circumstances. The soldiers climbed over at barbed wire when they were being machine gunned by uh, the enemy. And they had often fallen into shell holes or foxholes, wounded. The foxholes were full of dirty, stagnant water. And many of the injuries were complicated by the development of gas gangrene, oh, and the fact that uh, clothing and earth and contaminated objects had been forced into their flesh by the impact of the shrapnel uh, or the wounds. And these sick men were brought back. And really the only treatment for gas gangrene was uh, amputation. amputation. Tragically, many soldiers died from injuries that should never have cost them their lives. The lucky ones were sent back to Britain. Up to 150 casualties arrived in Reading each day at the peak of the war to be treated in the town's hospitals. And it was here that a young surgeon named Leonard Joyce made a groundbreaking discovery. Hello. Chairman of the Berkshire Medical Heritage Centre, Tim Smith, is here to tell Tish and Mark more. Joyce had noted that certain wounds of patients coming up from France had a characteristic smell and those with a characteristic smell got better more quickly than other wounds. And in conjunction with the bacteriologist at the hospital, he cultured, grew organisms from these particular wounds that had the characteristic smell. And they did animal experiments, they grew this, this bacterium, and in animal experiments showed that it could help wound healing. And then he took the very bold step of deliberately inoculating that into the wounds of patients. And it worked. It was, a, it was what's called a proteolytic bacteria. It broke down tissues to enable proper wound healing to take place. He treated many patients successfully with this technique and probably shortened their, their time in hospital. Dr. Leonard Joyce's pioneering work meant many of the World War I wounded went on to make speedy recoveries, all thanks to his nose and the discovery of Reading Bacillus. Jennifer, Philip and Olive have headed half an hour down the road to Eversley in Hampshire, where they're arriving at their next shop. This looks rather gorgeous, I must say. Out you come. Thought you might stay in, but no. Housed inside this 16th century barn is a wide variety of antiques, furniture and collectibles. Hello. 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 I'm Hilary. Hi, Hilary. Nice to meet you. Hilary, we've met, haven't we? We've met before. Nice Hello to see friends. you again. And what a very good lady Hilary is, <laughs> let me tell you. Shall we go and have a look round? Is that all yes. right? Yes. Those are nice, mind. The little lions, Jennifer. Pretty. I do like those. You do? Yeah. I think what's nice about the lions is that they're, they're weathered. I like those. And worn. And worn. And they're weathered and, and worn. They're, they've got a nice look to them. What is that worth? Hilary, the lions. Uh, the little ones? Yeah. How much is on those? 55. They can be 40 for you. So, straight away, the pair of reconstituted stone lions are set aside for consideration, and it looks like Phil's found something else. So, this is a, um, a reproduction luggage rack. Mm. It is probably 1950s. I quite like this because mm. it would look quite a cool little coffee table, wouldn't it? Like that. It's quite nice. Put a tray on it. Yeah. It's easy. And what's price, that? Uh, price at 95. It's quite a lot. It's got to be 50 quid, hasn't it? Yeah. I think it's got to be slightly less, I have to say. 
I think if I was... I do, gonna... I do like this lady. I just think I, I like was going to buy it. What do you think about that? If, if we could get that for 40, do you think? 40? 40, 40, I'd go for it. Could you do that for 40 for us? Halfway, 45, I'll do. It's up to you, my love. Yes, I do like it. We'd like this and the lions. That at 45 and the lions at 40. 80 to 2 would be better, wouldn't it, really? Yeah. Because it sort of ma just makes the math so much easier, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> 80 for 2. That would, that yeah, would be, that'd that'd be, that'd be, right. be fine. 80 for the 2. That generous discount means Jennifer and Phil bag themselves the stone lions for £40 and the Georgian style luggage rack for another 40 Upstairs, some feathered friends have caught Jennifer's eye. They are gorgeous. Yeah. Those are fun, aren't they? I think, well, I think they look really nicely done. If you look at the detail on the, the feathers, it's really good. Would there be a lot of movement on price on these? I can always make a phone call. How much is on them? Oh, Two, four, five. five. That's quite a lot, I Well, think. I'll go and ask. Hillary makes a quick call to the dealer, only to find he won't go any lower than £200. 200 now, we'd, we'd be poles away. I know. Mm. Turning down the turkeys, Jennifer and Phil head back downstairs. And look who's turned up. Oh, no. Oh, no, they're here. Oh, no. They got here before us. This is not fair, is it? Hello. So? Hi. Hello. I can't believe you got here and you've been buying stuff. I'm yeah, so jealous. No, 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 we wouldn't I'm have so sorry. We, we haven't. Waited we you. haven't um, I'm desperate to go inside. Like, bye. Come on. I'm not surprised, as Tish and Mark are yet to buy a single thing with their £400. I don't know where to start. I know, it's, it's I a... really don't. So what we want is something that really stands out. Stands out, it's quirky, something that's fresh to the market. It's completely overwhelming. There is so much stuff. While Tish and Mark are feeling the pressure, the rivals are on a roll. Do you want to win? Don't offer me the bedpan. <laughs> Corner cupboard. How much? How much would I pay for it? Yeah. Hmm. About 50 quid? You pay 50 quid for it? Well, I don't like it, but I think I would pay something like 50 quid for that because it's quite a nice one. This. I was selling that for a customer and they're very happy for it to go to a good home for not a lot of money. So I know I can do something on that. Probably even £30 they'd be happy with. Did you hear that, Jennifer? <laughs> they'd take 30 quid for it. Well, I'm selling it for a customer. Yeah, let's take it. We can't walk past that. I think for 30 quid that's not bad at all. How old do you think it is? Uh, it's 19th century. Mm. But it may have had some alterations done back here, but I don't think so. Mm. We can't walk past that, can we? No, I think that's... That's profit. OK. That's profit. You hope. So, the late Georgian corner cupboard becomes their fourth lot bought. Still to spend a penny, Tish has found something she fancies. Now, what do you think about this? Oh, gosh, I need to sit down. What is it? Show me. So this is a scrapbook. What I think is interesting about it is, first of all, that it's enormous. Yes. But secondly, when you open it, you realise that, in fact, it is... Empty. Empty. And therefore, quite, I thought, attractive for somebody who is looking for a wedding present for somebody or something, because it's... A very unique item. And what's brilliant about the design is, as you fill it up with your stuff... It'll get. It, it, it's got space wow. within the pages to, to take its full form. What do you think? It's only well, £30. I, £30. £30. £30. It looks as if it's got age, doesn't it? I like that. I love that sort of... What you call this oxblood leather. Yes. You know that? You don't that see that anymore, colour. It matches our car. It does match. <laughs> I think this is not a bad buy, you know. A lot of the market these days is to do with... Decorators items. Mm. It's only thirty pounds, twenty. Do you want to try and negotiate on the first item? Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. I'm a bit nervous now. Go on. <sighs> okay. Let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Give it a go. Go on, Tish. Mm. Work your magic. We've found this scrapbook. I'm quite keen on it, but um, I noticed that the, the price you have on it is thirty pounds, and I was wondering if that was the what best. I could do for you. Um, I think, normally I'd say 25, but you do have, you are in a competition, so I'll say 20. That sounds absolutely brilliant. 20, so Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Do you agree, Mark? Well, you didn't need no. me, did you? <laughs> no, she didn't. She secured the late Victorian unused scrapbook all by herself. Top marks. And just as Jennifer and Philip thought they were all done, 
Is that a little miniature Staddle Stone here? It is. It's lovely. That's weathered as well. <gasps> oh, that is sweet. What about that with the nice lions? Nice with the lions. Yes. yes. Oh, please, let's do that. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. I don't know how much is on that. Can you see it? Sixty-eight pounds. Fifty pounds. Can you do this as forty as well? Not quite forty. Two. Forty-five. Five. <laughs> Forty-five. Okay, let's do it. Okay, done. Shoo! <laughs> Thank you. Well done, Jennifer. Thanks. Thank you. So Jennifer and Phil will put the Staddle Stone alongside their lions to make one lot for auction. Mark, meanwhile, has spied those bronze turkeys. The other team turned down. I need to look at these. The thing with these is they are, well, Austrian coal made of bronze, so they're made about 18, 19, 1900. And there was one maker particularly who made the best quality ones called Franz Bergman. Right. And he, he used to sign his um, initials in a little urn with the letter B. The thing is that coal painted bronze are very collectible. They're quite nicely made. Do you honestly think that these would sell? Well... I have to say, I think they're absolutely hideous. If somebody... Well, absolutely hideous can sell, you know. He's not wrong. And Mark reckons the birds are worth a punt. OK. Now, Hillary, we've fallen in love with these two turkeys. They are nice. The dealer has already said he'd take £200 for the turkeys. Can Mark sweet-talk him okay. down a little lower? Brian. 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 Hello, Brian. My lovely celebrity Tish here and I have fallen in love with these. Um, I think they're lovely. I'm just hoping, Brian, you might just tweak them under the 200 for us. 195, and I can't tweak you to around 190. Okay. Is that all right? 190. Oh, Brian, you're such a star. Thank you so much for your time. And thanks from Tish, too. Jennifer and Phil might be furious when they find out, but that's the bronze turkeys bought for £190. Oh, that's it. I'm exhausted. Right. <laughs> I'm exhausted. And so ends a busy day of buying for our weary celebrities and experts. Nighty night. It's the next morning. <laughs> Olive and our antique hunting actresses are back on the road. How was your day yesterday? How did you find everything? Well, we left you at that. I was, I was living so that you got there before us. <laughs> because there was a couple of things and I thought, oh, I love those. Like what? What things? Oh, there was a couple of cold painted bronzes and things which I, you don't like, I don't think. There was, did you I see really the turkeys? think they're hideous. Oh, no, we, we, see, I love we, we, we did bronze. see the turkeys. Yeah. I thought they were great. Well, that's a little awkward. Anyway, despite passing on the turkeys, Jennifer and Phil had a successful shopping time yesterday, bagging a whole heap of goodies. The Victorian tin and legal wig, the reconstituted stone lions, the miniature staddle stone, the late Georgian corner cupboard, and the Georgian-style luggage rack, leaving them with £195 to spend today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Tish and Mark, meanwhile, have bought two lots so far. The late Victorian unused scrap album and the rare Bergman cold painted bronze turkeys, which means they still have £190 available to spend today. Thank you very much. En route to meet the girls, Mark and Phil have had a bit of car trouble. Thankfully, they're not too far from the meeting point, so are hoofing it. The girls, meanwhile, are oblivious to the boys' predicament. I think we've taken a massive risk on one of our items. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Ooh. Oh, I wish I knew what it was, cos I was in that shop. I know. Well, I'm not allowed to tell you. I'm sworn to secrecy. I'm okay. finding it incredibly difficult. OK. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the boys have arrived, and poor Phil looks puffed out. Mark, you meanie. I hope you don't expect Tish to pull you, too. There's the boys. Oh, 
Hello, lovely. Why are you old fools? He Look at the you. car. <laughs> 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 I only noticed you when you got your leg out. <laughs> How are you this morning, Dorothy? He did. Well. He broke it. No, How are you? He broke the car. The... Have you done the car? I did break the car. It broke down. He broke the car. It broke down. He broke While the you car. were driving it? I was driving it, yes. Oh. But the engine just... I think there's something what wrong with it. What are they going to do? I think it's got... Dirt well, in the petrol. When you said, what are they going to do? You're absolutely right. What are they going to do? Because we've got the car. We could come in the back. Sorry? Oh, come Olive. on. Olive struggles in the back. You're not going to let us You're not going to let us have it. Have a lovely day. Vehicle, please, <laughs> we'll see you later what on. What are we going to do? Come They've on. already had a head start. But this is this not isn't fair. fair. Yeah. Yeah. Life's full of unfairness, isn't it? Come on, Olive. I don't know what you're going to do. I think we'll start walking. <laughs> don't you? I'm not going to leave your legs. You're unbelievable. With no thought for their carless rivals, Jennifer and Phil make a speedy exit and take to the road, heading towards Goring. You do know the real bonus of this, don't you? What's that? Well, we're going to be there an hour before them. We are. Oh, my gosh. What's been your worst corpsing moment on stage? Once Dawn and I were shooting a sketch with um, Stephanie Beecham. Yeah. <laughs> and we got the worst giggles, I mean, ever. And Stephanie was great at the beginning. She was like, no, that's fine, that's absolutely fine. Ha, 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 ha. And honestly, about half an hour in, and it was half she an had hour, enough. I could see on her face. And that made us laugh more. The fact that we knew that everybody, including the director, was going, this is no longer funny. You have to do this <laughs> You can't help yourself. And it just made us go even, it was, it became unprofessional. Sometimes it's fun and it's lovely but it, it really was bordering on terribly unprofessional and we should have been drummed out of the industry. <laughs> well, we're very pleased that you went. Both teams will start their shopping in Goring and unsurprisingly, armed with a car, Jennifer and Phil may get first dibs. I'll tell you what, you bought one, I yeah. bought one. I think it's Olive's turn. Do you? See if she can sniff something. Come on, Olive. See if you can sniff some of that, Olive. What if they find bones? It's antiques you're after, Phil, not bones. Stuffed full of vintage and retro items, straight away Jennifer spotted something she likes. Well, you see, I'm immediately drawn, just for my grandchildren, to this little chair. Oh, that's so cute. I quite like that little kid's chair. I think that's rather nice. But it would only go for a tenner. And it is only 12. Get that for a fiver. I think that's, I'd love that little thing. That's I, quite I would sweet, definitely isn't it? absolutely get that. I think that's a cracking little item. Have we got any teddies or something? You like, you sit the teddy in it and sell no. the teddy in the chair. Jennifer. Oh. He's quite nice. He is, isn't he? He's quite nice. And he's not brand new either. No. Put him on the chair. On the chair. Put him on the chair. While Jennifer and Phil consider the chair and Teddy, Tish and Mark are ready to browse and raring to buy. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you? Hi. Thank you for having us. Can you point us in the way of the bargains? <laughs> and don't say everywhere. Hello. Oh. Hello. Sorry. Here comes I'm trouble. coming through. Coming through. <laughs> You're not going to even stop and say hello. 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 How are you? Have you bagged everything good? No, not at all. Good. Come on, then. Let's quickly go. Let's, go, let's quickly go upstairs. Oh, How are you at the oppo? Where's my oppo? She no, she's just gone roaring she past us. Yeah. You're in, in here first again. Oh, you know. It's just, Honestly. It's just the way it goes. It's well, we've got a shop, though. We haven't got time for really? idle chit chat. Good luck. Oh, yeah, bad luck. What? <laughs> bad luck, he said. Isn't that nasty? They're the best of friends, really. Right, you two. What can you find? Oh, that's nice. It's Mason's, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mason's pottery. It's Mason's pottery. And I'm thinking that there's quite a trend these days, macaroons. Macaroons. <laughs> Fond and fancy. Yes. Um, and people like a, a cake stand. I mean, I like it. Yeah? And I mean, we'll probably get it for 10 or something. Yeah. Because it's marked at 12.50. But at auction, as a single lot... Uh, you don't think it'll make any money? I don't think it'll make a huge amount. Well, best put it back then, Tish. Did you see that, that old tin? This one? Yeah. I 
like that because you could like put kindling in it next to your fire. Well, it's an old hat box. I thought it might go with our wig box. Aha! It looks like a lot made up of tin boxes might be on the cards. Have another tin. Oh, well, now that is a cute thing. Look at that. What's it for? Well, it's, it's for it says it's for tapers. Prices, dropless white tapers for lighting candles. And there's a few tapers. There's not four there. candles in there, is it? But that's a nice little thing. It's got possibilities. It's got 19 on it, so I think that's a bit steep. Oh, she's a tough one, that Saunders. Tish? Yes, sir. What do you think of this? I love it. I love it. I love it. Of course, it's not an antique. But it's... It's a statesman piece, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's, sta it's what we was, you were saying that you wanted to find. It, it's, it's, I think... I mean, they've called it a log basket, which it could be. Well, it could be a log basket. Or a laundry basket. basket. I would have that in my house. Or if you like a bottle of wine, of course, it could be an ice bucket. <laughs> for a party. Yeah. <laughs> you know, have your champagne in there. How much is it on for? 30 quid. <gasps> They're keen on the tollware bin, so dealer Suze called the owner to find out how low he'll go. Oh, was Suze here with the decision? Well, the answer was £20. <gasps> Brilliant. Which is yes. yes, done we deal. Can Definitely. we shake your hand? Thank Listen, you so much. You're a miracle worker. Thank, Thank you so I much. <laughs> it looks so good. Tish and Mark are very pleased with their purchase. Are you happy? Delighted. I'm delighted with this wonderful thing. Now it's Jennifer's turn to get her haggling hat on. Can she strike a deal with Nicole and Maddie on the hat and taper tins? So you've got 22 on that and you've got 19 on that. Right. Now. What's your best price for the two? I'll take five pounds off. So it'll be 14. Mm. I can see her face. <laughs> well, I'd like to pay £10. You can have it for 10. OK. Um, this is not mine. Oh, isn't it? So how do we how So do we usually it is 10%, but I'm sure I can let you have it for 15. That's not bad. Come on, Phil. I'd have the two for 20. Can you do the two for 20? Oh. No, it's not mine. Oh, yeah. OK, it's, we've also got, got the child's chair, which is at 12.50, and this bear at 14. Right, again, so. they're not mine. So um, the chair can be eight. OK. And the bear can be eight as well. 15 for the two. If we could do 15 and 20, we'll have them. Oh, go on, then. Oh! Yeah. Thank you You're fantastic, much. thank you. So, for £35, Jennifer and Phil have bought four more items. And that means their shopping is complete. I hope they have done very well. well. Done. And well done you, Olive, too. Olive's worn out. Tish and Mark, meanwhile, have made their way to the historic market town of Hungerford. Situated at the heart of the North Wessex Downs, it's home to Kimmer Antiques. This family-run business has a wide variety of antiques and collectibles on offer. Nothing inside's grabbed Tish, but she spied something interesting outside. Now, why would you like this? Because I love the proportions. I love a child's chair. You know, the really good ones go for hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Do. So, I mean, this doesn't seem to have a... A price no. on it. Do you know what style of chair we call this? I'm f I know I should, but I don't. It's don't called a Windsor chair. A Windsor chair. And it's, it's a very, very English design. Yes. They started life really in the sort of 1740s, 1730s and onwards, and they've been made ever since. I can tell, even with my amateur eye, that this isn't, isn't a particularly high quality. And it's not old, yeah. particularly. And it's not old. But, but do you think it would sell? I think it's got a charm about it, doesn't it? There's no ticket price. Time to call on dealer David. David, now what sort of price is that, David? Well, what, can we start off around £80? Good Lord, we could start there, but we're going to end an awful lot later. <laughs> um, what do you think, Tish? Yes, what do you think? Um, I can't quite believe what Marcus just mouthed at me, and I think it's probably a bit cheeky, but um, 
I'm going to be led by my expert, and I'm going help. to offer you, David, I'm going to offer you £20. I could do 30 for you, Mark. But I think you're being very nice to... to what about, do you really think that will make it awkward? Do you think it'll be OK? To I, I think it would be very OK if we sort of shook hands at 25. Would, would 28, Mark, sort of... Oh, you? I know yes. it's hard, Mark. I tell you what, 28, just, yes, I'm taking I, 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 the exact decision. <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> Mark. Don't drive him I, any Mark, lower. It's a pleasure, sir. I want three pound off a shake of my hand. <laughs> Twenty-eight. Well done. Thank That's you so much, David. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Twenty-eight pounds. Tish sealed that deal. <laughs> That's the little Windsor chair for twenty-eight pounds. You do, don't you? In the meanwhile, Jennifer, Phil, and Olive have made their way to Newbury. Jennifer is famed as one of the country's finest comedians, so they've come to learn about the man who is credited for inventing slapstick comedy, music hall impresario Fred Carno. Here to tell them more is Carno historian and biographer David Crump. He started life really as an acrobat in the music halls mm -hmm. around 1888, but he literally took uh, the music hall by storm. I mean, he was the Andrew Lloyd Webber of his day in that Fred Carnot's name was above the door. It didn't matter who was in the sketch. Unlike a lot of music hall performers who had an act and ran that act for 40 years, mm. Carnot had a new sketch every three or four months. And the sketch was 20, 30 minutes within a show. And he also had the Alex Ferguson approach to comics in that he brought them in young, trained them, mm. and then they were cheap. Carnot found and trained many young comics over the years, and two of Britain's best-loved comedians of their time were discovered by Carnot, Charlie Chaplin and Stan Laurel. They both joined him at yeah. about aged 18. Chaplin's older brother, Sid, actually was a Carnot comic, and, he? and he was the star of Carnot sketches at the time. And Sid encouraged Carnot to give his little brother a chance. Carnot didn't like the look of him initially, thought he was far too puny, and too young to do very much, mm. brought him in, gave him a go, and he developed slowly mm. as a comic. Stan Laurel joined about the same time, they were a similar age. Mm. And what actually happened was, Carnot was touring all over the world by then, and it was around the time the silent movies were starting, so mm. gradually these comics started to get poached by the studios. Mm. And in 1910, um, Carnot sent a tour to America, and he didn't want to send Sid Chaplin for fear of Sid, Sid his star. Chaplin getting oh. stolen by the by the So pictures. he sent the little brother. So he sent the little brother. Charlie. So they went on this ship called the Cairn and Rona. Oh. This is Chaplin in the centre. This is Stan Laurel. Oh, look at him. He already looks like an old man. And they were, I think... <laughs> His hat's like that big. So he was, I think he was about 21 then. Both Chaplin and Laurel held Carno in high regard. Stan Laurel once said, Fred Carno didn't teach Charlie and me all we know about comedy, he just taught us most of it. <laughs> they also picked up from Carno the sort of control freak that he was. Mm. So he was involved with everything. He wrote them, he directed them, he was in them. Um, he even ended up buying the company that printed the posters. He ended up running the theatres. He had half a dozen theatres of his own because he wanted to control the minutiae. Yeah. And Stan Laurel was the same. He wrote, he directed, he, he was the comedy brain behind Laurel and Hardy. And Chaplin, of course, famously, was exactly the same. Also known as the governor, Carno was a huge influence on early comedy and the most important comedians of the early 20th century. He made literally millions in today's money and uh, he invested it fairly badly in that he bought a hotel on Tags Island in the Thames by Hampton Court which he called the Carcino, and put all of his money into this, this hotel. <laughs> and he, he basically lost the lot, he bankrupted oh, him. No. And it was also the time the First World War came along. After the First World War, I think people wanted something different. Music, Music Hall, Hall was, was, faded, was waning. Yeah. And, um, and sadly, he ended up... I'd love it now. Yeah, absolutely. He ended up running an off-licence in Dorset and left 40 quid in his will. Having gone from that, you know, right, superstar, so absolute superstardom, yeah. He is credited with inventing the custard pie in the face gag. Because he always wanted it to stick to the face, too. You that consistency's got to be just the right. Consistency is very important. Yeah. Right and consistency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> he notices. <laughs> that, now, that's quite a good texture. Yeah. That's stuck and... It's perfect. Yeah. 
That was good. What was that? That was quite good. Well done. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, no, thank you so much. I'd run if I were you, Jennifer. No, I'm just going to put my glasses back on. <laughs> well, at least Olive's having her lunch. <laughs> Meanwhile, Patricia and Mark are still shopping in Hungerford. They're making one last stop, hoping for some final lots to take to auction. Oh, oh look at this! Oh, I can't bear it. This, this is that. absolutely I can see my kind already. of place. Specialising in 19th and early 20th century antiques, there's sure to be something to tickle Tishy's road trip taste buds. I really like this. This is an old-fashioned boot scraper, so you plonk it down by your door and when you come in you can get all the mud off the bottom of your shoes. And it's got lovely wear on it here. And a lovely design. It's sunk into concrete here, which is a little bit off-putting. But actually, the boot scraper itself, I think, is cast iron, which is really good. I can't see a price on it, which is a really bad sign. <laughs> Probably means it's incredibly expensive. While Tish is eyeing up the boot scraper, Mark's off for a snoop around the stock room with owner Stuart. Oh, my gosh, it's like an Aladdin's cave. Now, that looks rather interesting. Is yeah, that a it's car a mask? Car mask. Yes, I imagine it is because of the central bar on yes. this mount. It's, it's, um, bra it's brass or bronze? brass. It'd be brass, actually, because of the colour of it. You can plaque. see that on a nice car, yes. can't you? Yes. That's Art Deco, isn't it? Mm. I mean, the shape of him is quite angular. Oh, I think I've got to show my celeb partner, you know. Yeah? Yeah, yeah let's take that okay, out. Right. Show and tell time, chaps. Right, what I is it? I love this iron boot scraper. Oh, you know what it is, you see. You've got an eye, haven't you? <laughs> You're absolutely right. It's... And I, I know it's in concrete, but, um, but I, think it's, I think it's good and I think it possibly might be something interesting that people would be... Well, it's a period one. Late Victorian, I would have thought. Oh, OK. Yeah, so, I mean, if you're doing a house up again, it's nice to have in the doorway. Yeah, absolutely. But I found something as well. Have you? What have yes. you found? I found a car mascot. Oh, I love him. A little staffy. It's a staffable terrier, isn't it? Oh, he's got weight. He's weight. Solid. But can you see the traces of silver? Yes. Well, that's chrome. Oh, wow. This, uh, this would have been chromed originally, so it really would have it's shone out. It's a really nice colour without the chrome, isn't it? It's and just a lovely And if you think of chrome, pattern. what period do you think? A uh, deco. Ah, oh, deco. But I love it, but I don't... Do you, like... know, do you know how much he's... No, and there's no plastic and this is on yours. If this could be a disaster, it could be really exciting. Should we call Stuart yes, in and find please. out? Shall we get him? Right, Stuart, what's the damage? Well, I could say £200 each, couldn't I? But you that's could, I, I would never would say thank you very much and goodbye. Bye. Um, I was thinking 50 to 2, actually, to you. 50 to each. Oh, I like 50, 50 to 2. Yeah. Goodness, I yeah. really like 50 to 2. That was a slip of the tongue, wasn't it? That was a slip of the tongue. <laughs> we won't hold you to that. To 50 each, actually. 50, uh, 50 each. Sorry, 50 each. Mm. Okay. So that's £100. But if we were going to buy them together, would you knock a bit off? I'd say £90. <gasps> could you possibly £90 stretch to 80 Yes, of course he can. Yeah, 90 pounds, I think, is the best. 85? I'll go for 85. Yeah. Are you sure? Thank you you no, don't no, I'm not sure, but we'll leave it at that moment. <laughs> can we do that? Don't push 85. Him. He might change his mind. Yeah. Should we say 85? Yes, it's been very I think it's a good yes, deal for you, too. I think Thank it is so a good deal. It's okay. a very good deal. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much, Dave. Well done. That very generous discount means Tish and Mark bag the brass mascot for 50 and the boot scraper for 35. All shopped up, the teams are back together, ready to reveal what they've all bought. We're dying to see this. We are. Be careful. There oh, we wow. Ooh, OK, I'm really envious of that. I do love the... Um, lug is it a luggage rack? Yes. Those are very in now, you know. Well, you luggage know me. Rack. Well, I'm that's what Phil trend. said, and I'm relying on him. No, they are. <laughs> How much did you pay for your 30 corner? quid. Oh, that's nothing, is it? That's absurd. That's that nothing. has grown on me so much. I love it. I love it's it. great. Look at the quality in it. Like quality in Glazing. I'm really All right, can, I, can we just show you that? What's inside? The oh. Show? Is it just show you? A dead thing. What do you mean? Thing? Uh, it's a, not a dead thing. It's, um, <laughs> well, what, it's a barrister's point? wig. Because people are barrasters What's and they the want wigs. They don't want to get new ones. They want to clean up old ones. Do they? Yeah. Well, it's really? very, and it's very in a lovely It's that hard to get your Yes. 
position. And We're very pleased with that. And then we have a job lot here of this bear is... and chair. <laughs> no, no, chair really bear. Would you like I'm completely bear? obsessed with, with your collection of stone. Saddle stone there. I, love I think those, I think those, those are... And I love the corner cabinet. Yeah, the all... cabinets, the money. Really this is the sleeper. Flat. This is the sleeper. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. I think Olive's the sleeper. Actually, Olive's the sleeper. It's Tish and Mark's turn. Are you ready for this? Yes. Time to reveal those turkeys. Brace yourself. I thought you'd <gasps> got the turkey. Oh! Guilty about it. I'm is she a friend of yours? Is she a friend of yours? I don't rate that. Why? It's useless. Okay, the that... real thing is, how much did the turkeys cost you? 190 pounds. What do you think they'll make? I think they might make four or five hundred pounds. I like the boot scraper. Good, good, that was my choice. I love the boot scraper. The little Lord. chair, I'm quite jealous of. Seriously, you bought I, very I well. I think seriously, the only thing you're going to lose on is this. I don't think we will, you know. Because it's a good yeah. interior design item. I am I'm quite cross about the <laughs> turkeys. <laughs> no, but I won't be cross when they lose a lot of money on it, Phil. But I it's a risk. I think it's honestly a risk. I think it's a risk. Okay. But, I think right. it's time to go and find some custard pies, isn't it, to get our revenge? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, we've got a couple learning. of sleepers. Well, give me a head start. Ready, steady, <laughs> go. Off you go. <laughs> so, out of earshot, what did they really make of each other's lots? I think they were a bit peeved about the turkeys. Well, I don't know why you would get that impression. <laughs> I can't believe those turkeys, can you? Wow. Well, the truth is, I'm I'm glad they've got them because I'm interested to know what they might get for them because then we'll know. I was envious of the um, the stone one. Oh, you love those. I, love I those. think they're great for a London flat. Yes, because if you've got small. a small garden flat, mm. perfect. Sure. So they I could think, make money. Actually. I think they could. Oh, yes. I love that. I think it's it it so cool. No, but it's useful too. It's a log basket. It's whatever you want. I think Jennifer is quite disappointed she didn't buy them. Yeah. I, think I so just too. hope we don't get stuffed. Well, let's find out, shall we? After starting in Taplow, our teams have shopped up all around Berkshire, Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire, and Jennifer and Tish are now motoring towards Greenwich for the big finale. Leaving Olive at home today, Jennifer is planning to unleash her newly acquired antiques expertise on the auction room. I'm going to lick the auctioneer, lick all my items. I might lick Mark. And then I'm going to lick every person that's in <laughs> the auction house. I'm going to go up and lick them. <laughs> and then I'm going to look at some of them and say, I think you may have been restored. <laughs> I think they've lost it, myself. <laughs> The venue for today's Lickathlon is Greenwich Auctions, where Mark and Phil are waiting to greet the girls. Breaks! Breaks! Hello. Hey. How are you, lovely? All right? Hello. 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 Are you excited about this? It's auction well. day. Good to see you. Oh, see you too. too hot for Olive. Oh, I'm quite right. I can't too wait for this. Mr. Hi, Stacey. How are, you? are you excited about this? I'm very excited. Oh, I'm, I can't I'm, wait. Oh, lovely to see you. How are you? Lovely to see you. Thanks. Yeah, let's go in, let's go in. Let's go in. Let's go in. The man with the gavel today is Robert Dodd. So, what does he make of everyone's lot? I like the lions. Shame there isn't three. <laughs> three lions. Then you've got a chance of a sportsperson buying them. The turkeys. I'm not going to say it, but someone's going to use it, isn't they? Are they going to be a turkey? I don't know. Time will soon tell. Patricia and Mark spent the most on this trip, splashing out £343 on six auction lots, while Jennifer and Philip bought five lots, costing them a total of £240. Today's auction has buyers both online and in the room, so let battle commence. The opening lot is Tish's little Windsor chair. Bids with me at £20 only on that chair. Looking for 22, 22, 25, 28, 32. Five I need. It's £3. Go on. 35 there, eight over there. Looking for 40. £40 there. £40, £12 there. 42, 42 there in the pews. Looking for 45. Are we all done at £42 only? It's only £10 a leg. Are we all done <laughs> at £42? Yes. yes. Thank you. A solid profit to start with. Great stuff. We're really, really pleased for you. I can see that, Phil. Really, really pleased for you. Oh, you old grump. Time for Jennifer and Phil's first lot, the Georgian-style luggage rack. 
30 pound I've got, looking for 32. Are we all done on that table at only 30, 32 there, looking for 35. 32 I've got, I want 35 pounds worth all of that, we all done. We're in trouble. Seated at 32 pounds. Cool, that Robert's a bit handy with the gavel. But that's a loss for Jennifer and Phil. Did you see that awful chair that made £42 and that beautiful... Have you said that once already? Don't be bitter. I'm not bitter. Not much. Next up, it's Tish's Victorian boot scraper. Straight in with a big £15. Oh, 15 pounds Looking for 18. 20 with me, looking for 22. Come on. 22, 5 with me, 28, 32, 5, 8, I'm out. Yes? 38 there, looking for £40 standing, looking for 40, 42, we're all done. This like, where are you? 42 there, 45, 48, 50 there, 5 here. there, 60 I want. Yes! 60 I've got, looking for 65. We're all done. 65 is back. 65. We're all done. At £65. Pounds. <laughs> yeah. No, no, don't. Another money maker there for Tish and Mark. I want to go shopping with you more. Yay. Come by in with me. <laughs> I would love to. They're ignoring us. Let's see if Jennifer and Phil can pull in a profit with their trio of tins, including the legal wig. Look at the 35. 35, 38, 42, 5, 8, 55, 60, I'm out. 65, I want. 65, 70, 75, 80. 85, 90, 95, 100, and 10, 120, Whoa. 130, 140. So it was us sleeping, it woke up. Give her 160, 160 on the telephone, 170, 180 on the It's the wig. 180 well done, 180. 180 there, Louis. 190 on the second phone. 200 I've got. Last time at 200 pounds. Wow. And give her a round of He looks so sincere, doesn't he? Hey, Jennifer predicted the tins and wig would fly, and boy, did they. I'm very pleased about that. Do you know what it was? The tapers. <laughs> oh, yeah, moving on. It's the turn of Tish and Mark's tollware bin next. Bids with me straight at only £25 on that. Oh, £25. 30 with me, looking for 32. Where's 32? Five with me, looking for 38. Are we all done at 35? We all done at 35, 38. 40 with me, two, I'm out. 42 pound in front, looking for 45, are we all done? Last time at 42 pounds. Yeah. I thought they'd make a lot more. Still a great profit, not to be sniffed at. Catch up with the wig. With the oh, oh, oh we'll be, wig there's a long way to go. That there is. We're just over halfway, and Jennifer and Phil's George and Cupboard is up next. And the bids with me straight in at forty-five pounds. Oh, well, you're fifteen pounds in profit already. I've got forty-five. Eight, I'm out. Looking for fifty. Are we all done? Last time at forty-eight pound on that cabinet. Another tidy Anna for Phil and Jennifer. Well, it's a bit of profit. A profit is a profit. Wise words. Time for Tish's Victorian scrapbook next. And the bids of me straight in at only £22 on that. Oh, £25, come on. 8 30 I'm out, looking for 32 30 pound I have, it's worth more than that. I've got 30 he's going to steal this at 30 2 I've got 5 8 38 there, 40 I want, £40 yes. pound I've we got. We doubled up at again. All done, standing at £40. Pound. The profits are flying in today. Yeah. Yeah. They've still got to make money well, on Nobody would want turkeys. that, would they? <laughs> nobody would want to buy that. <laughs> Next, it's Jennifer and Phil's Staddlestone and Lions. I've got 40, I want 42. Five, eight, I'm out. 48 pound on each. On the it. telephone of 48, 50 pound and five. And 60, sir. 60 in the middle of the room, five, oh, I want. On, and 70. More. Why not? 65, I'm looking for 70. Go on, no, I Jennifer, you've got to work this. Oh, 70 up, pound Come on, boys. 75, on the phone at 75, looking for 80. One more. On. Yes, one more. One more. On. Cool. 75, looking for 80. 75, looking for 80. At 75 pound on the telephone. No. Damn it. A disappointing loss there. Hard cheese. I was so, so determined not to lose that there much money. Tish and Mark are up again, this time with their Art Deco brass car mascot. It's got to start with a bid with me of only £40 on this. 
42 I need. I've got 42. Five here. Looking for 48. 50 on, with me. Looking for 55. 60 with me. Looking for 65. I've got se Come five, on. 70 here. Looking for 75. Are we all done on the dog last Come time? On. 75, I'm out. Looking for 80. Are we all done? That's 75 pounds. The doggy's done good. Great profit there. So, this is Turkey's V chair. Turkey's V chair and well bear. Let's not forget the bear. Who could, Jennifer? Here we go. It's the children's chair and bear. Straight in at only £42. Looking for 40 Hello, anyone out there? 45 I want. Anyway, 42 with me. 45 I want. The ladies here. 45, 48, 55 out there. Looking for 60 on this. I've got 55. I take Come 58. On, give some profit. God, this last time on a chair and bear at £55. Fantastic result. Well done. Thank you very much. That was a bit of profit. And it? actually, we've made a good profit, well, and so we're well, all well, in profit. Jennifer and Phil are in the lead. It all comes down to the last lot. Those Bergman coal-painted bronze turkeys. Will the crowd gobble them up? Looking for 95 on these two birds. I've got 95, 100, 110, 120, 130 I need. 130, 140, 150 I want, Louis. Second phone is 160, 170, 180 I need, Louis. 180, 190 I need, Louis. 190, 200 he needs. 200 pound on the second phone. I really want these to do well. 220 I want. 220 I've got. 230 on Louis's phone. 240 I want. 240 and 250. 250 and 260. 260 I've got. 270. All done at 260. 270, new place. Bag of the room, 280 I want. 280, 290 there, looking for 300. You're going to do it, baby. 300 pounds. 310 in the room, 320 I need. It's still going. 320 I've got. 330 in the room. <laughs> 330, 340. 350 and 60, Rob. 360 pound on the well table. Well done, Stace, well done. Yeah, well done. 370, looking for 380. 380, looking for 390. 390, looking for That's 400. Incredible. That's incredible. 400 pounds. <laughs> yes, 410 in the room, take 420. 420, 430, 440 I need. 440 on the telephone, is it? I've got 430 in the room, are we all done? This time, last time, at 430 pounds. 117, give him a round of applause. That well done, is an absolutely terrific profit. <laughs> Jennifer and Phil must regret not buying them. They started with £400 after paying auction costs. They made a tidy profit of £96.20p. So they end the trip with a marvellous £496.20. Not bad. Not bad. Trisha and Mark also kicked off with £400, and they too made a profit, making a very impressive £226.08p after auction costs. So, they're crowned today's winners, finishing with a huge £626.08. and All profits go to children in need. Well done, you know, well done you. I am competitive, I have to say, we're all winners. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> but just some have won bigger there than others. There are no losers. There are only winners. Yeah. That's what all good losers say, Jennifer. <laughs> Let's drive off into the sunset. Bye! Bye! I'm going to miss this. I'm going to miss it. Can we I'm just do this all the time? Phil and Mark. I know! <laughs> so much. It has been the best fun. It's been fantastic. It's been marvellous having you. Toodle pit, girls. <laughs>